good um, morning year 10. So by this time you've gone through assessment task 4 um, with your teacher um, and this is just a tutorial to get you guys started with this program Lightburn. Okay, so by this time you would have downloaded the Lightburn software. It's the software that we're going to be using to um, come up with our, a design for the laser cutter and then using that software also to connect to the laser cutter um, and then cut out our toy, our jigsaw puzzle. Um, uh, you know, using that particular technology. So this is just going to be a short demonstration on how you're going to use the software to develop a design. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just have a look at the different functions on the software. So you can see on the left hand side here we have a pen tool that will allow you to draw lines and to manipulate lines if you want to. Um, if you hold, if you just you know, click and let go of the line you're allowed to draw really straight objects if you hold down the line and you let go then you can start manipulating those shapes as well okay so you can play around with the line tools um, if you've got a square tool you've got a circle tool pentagon tool and then you can also manipulate edges as well you've also got text with text too and these are all features that we will use uh, in our designing okay so, so for the um, jigsaw puzzle that we're going to be developing it's going to be quite a small jigsaw puzzle because it's only for, uh, for kids that are roughly the age of three so it's not going to be you know like a 200 piece jigsaw puzzle it needs to be something that's simple something that's easy for them to put together um, but also teaches them some kind of literacy or numeracy skills. So the first thing we're going to do is develop the base um, for our structure or for our shape using the rectangle tool. And it's going to be 16, uh, 16 centimeters wide by 10 centimeters high. So if I just click on the square tool and drag across, I can create a rectangle. And then I'm gonna to come to the top here where it says width and height. And I'm going to make 160 millimeters wide. 16 centimeters, centimeters high. shape the base shape for our structure and if I click on this um, cursor tool then I can pull it and I want to pull it right into the corner because when the laser cutter starts this is actually the bed the size of the bed of the laser cutter and this is the corner or the home corner where it begins its cuts from so the closer to that corner it is the less timber I'll be wasting. Okay, so now I know that that's exactly the size um, that I need for my um, jigsaw puzzle. I'm going to press enter on that. It's good to go. We'll just click off it. The next step um, that we need to put into place uh, is the actual shape of the jigsaw puzzle. Now you could spend hours and hours trying to develop the shape of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, and you'd still have trouble putting it together so i've actually found software that you'll be able to find on your google classroom um, that will help you do that okay so this is just a jigsaw puzzle generator and we just wanted to have a quick discussion about the kind of things that you need to consider when you're developing a jigsaw puzzle for you know people that are three years old so firstly this particular example here has a hundred tiles in it so if i'm a kid that's three years old there's no way that I'm going to be able to develop that at all. So I can actually change the number of tiles present in my design. Okay, so I've made it something a lot more simple, 16 tiles. Um, you could even go nine if you really wanted to. Um, up to you really what you decide to do, but you want something that a three-year-old can put together. So you need to be considerate of the target market when putting this project together. Okay. The other thing that we can play around with um, is the tab sizes. So these small sections here are the tabs. The larger they get, just as an example, so you can make them really big, but the larger they get, can you see how there's all these really thin bits here? One there, another one here, another one here, etc. When I laser cut, if I've got two pieces that are being laser cut into that narrow section, that becomes a point. Um, where the actual timber can break because it's so narrow. So when I do my tab sizing, I need to try to be a little bit considerate of that. 
and even if I keep them large but kind of make that tab size a little bit smaller so that there's more of a bridge between these two sections here the structural integrity of my pieces are going to be a lot better so just be considerate of that with your tab sizes as well you also have this section here called jitter and jitter just changes like the consistency of each piece so for example if there's no jitter you can see that it's fairly everything's uh, perpendicular to each other it's either vertical or horizontal whereas the jitter starts to make it a little bit more uh, kind of out of whack so you can have a little bit more intricacy in your design but again you need to be considerate that some of the shapes that you're making are going to be very pointy uh, and they could break off uh, once you've laser cut with them so um, that's up to you again to decide what you want to do and then you also have the seed okay and the seed is just changing and playing around with um, the orientation of all those different tabs that you've added okay so you can play around with that as well and get something that you want um, you can see that when we do the seating here everything is now facing and going that way when we do the seating in this particular direction you've got things moving in both directions okay so it's up to you to decide you know, what you want to do okay it's up to you um, and the last thing you've got also is the corner radiuses so you could very slight radius on your corner, very large radius on your corner, too big almost. Um, so you can play around with that as well if you want to create a jigsaw puzzle that's not exactly, not exactly um, yeah, an oval. It's up to you what you decide to do. Okay, I'm just going to put five mil rounded edge on it, and that's all I want. Okay. The other thing I've done is I've also made the size of my jigsaw puzzle 160 millimeters by 100, which is the same size as I've done in my laser burn. So when I download this file, it's called Jigsaw 4, and I come back to my laser burn, file, import, and I've brought in that particular design now as quickly as that and all I'm going to do now is move it but when I move it I want it to fit snug on the shape here okay so that. right now it's fitting snug on that shape over there okay because that's going to become um, the shape that we're working within okay they're grouped using this button here where you've got the three heads all together now I can move them all I can select them all together and move them all uniformly as well just zoom in a lot just so that you can actually get this thing to snap exactly onto the edges you need perfect click off it good to go Okay, so now I've got my basic shape that I want, and that is going to make up the um, the basic structure for my design. You can see on the left-hand side here, I've got these three different layers. Now, they're all saying line, okay, because they are all lines, but I've got a black color, a blue color, and a red color. Now, I want all of these to be the same. And if I was to click on these blue and red lines and just change the color down the bottom to black, you can see that they have all now become the same layer which is what I want because essentially I want all those different layers let me go back again okay to operate in the same way and to generate the same cut so I'm going to highlight those blue and red layers click on black so they all line up together the next thing I need to do is consider the type of material that we're using to cut with and the material that we're using is a three mil ply so at the bottom here you can see it says library I'm going to click on library 
going to go down and find plywood generic. Click on that and then it gives me a three millimeter option. Click on that. And then I'm going to click on this button here, line. Okay, so line means that I want to create a cut all the way through. Fill means I want to shade a particular shape in. And image means that I want the laser cutter to draw an image. But for this particular object, I want it to generate a line. So I'm going to click on line. I'm going to click assign to the layer. So now everything that's black is going to be assigned to that layer. Now, because I'm cutting all the way through this material, in order for it to cut all the way through, it's going to have to kind of follow that path multiple times to generate a cut all the way through the material. So I'm going to make it pass over the material five times. And then I'm also going to uh, change the speed from 200. Actually, I'm going to leave the speed for now. So speed is at 200, which is the speed at which the laser is going to move around. The power is 100%, okay? And it's going to pass over that shape five times. So we're going to leave that for now. The next thing that we want to do is we want to put some kind of imagery onto this particular shape here. Okay, so let's try that. The first thing I want to do, because this is going to be an alphabet design, is going to be add some text. So I can click on the text icon. Let's generate some kind of text. Um, This is a nursery room that you would all be familiar with. What I want to do now is actually change, I want to move it and I want to change the size of it. So if I go to the moving options, I can also play around with the sizing of it. Okay, so let's do that. And then if I want to hold down shift, I can actually elongate it a little bit too. Okay, so this little piggy went to market, this little piggy stayed home. Okay fairly popular nursery rhyme and then if I wanted to change the text time and the font I could also play around with that as well okay so you can pick a text that you want to this particular design um, but for text to work effectively you need to think about the line that's going to be generated around the text and shading so the first thing I'm going to do for this particular text here I'm going to select it again I'm going to change the color of it I'm going to change it to a blue so now you can see that I've got a separate line and the mode for it is fill okay because I want the laser cut to actually shade in this whole shape here so I'm going to fill it, I'm going to come down to my library again, click on fill because this gives me a presetting for this particular material that works really well. I'm going to assign it to the layer and you can see that the power level changed a little bit based on the material that we're using. Okay, so I'm going to use that now. But I also want to generate a line around this shape once it's been filled so it stands out a little bit as well. So what I can do now also is just duplicate that layer by clicking it, selecting it, I 
can duplicate the layer by pressing this copy button here. Okay, Control V, it's been duplicated. Straight away I'm going to change the color of that line so it's different and I'm also going to move it so that it sits again exactly over that blue line. Zoom in all the way so that you can make sure that it's perfectly over it and that's going to be a line. Okay, So it's going to be a line I'm going to assign it to the layer but I'm going to change the properties because I don't want it to cut all the way through um, to cut all the way through the timber like our uh, external piece lines so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the speed to 400 I'm going to double the speed and what that means is the laser will move twice as fast over each one of those pieces as it would for the cutting outlines which means it doesn't have as much time to burn timber. If it doesn't have as much time to burn timber, it won't burn through as much. But I'll also decrease the speed, the power of the laser to 60%. Okay, this will hopefully allow it to um, to not cut through, and it will make it not cut through. Okay, so now I've got another line, but you can see it's very different in speed and power to the black cutting outlines that I've set up already. Then I might want to add some kind of imagery to my design. So this is a nursery and I've got three little pigs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up three pigs. Okay. You might find a cartoon or an image that you want to add to your design. Okay, If you're trying to add an image to your design, you normally want it to be uh, as simple as possible. Okay, The more intricate a design, the harder it is for the laser to show the variations, um, show variations in the design. So you want something that's quite simple. It's a very simple um, piece of artwork normally. Um, let's say I had something like this. It's probably still a little bit too intricate. Something like this would work. Just a very basic cartoon. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to come back to my laser burn, file, import. I'm going to import that picture that I just found. And you can see that it's been added there now. Okay. So First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. And there we go. Okay. The only problem that you have with this is that can you see how there's a background on it? If you've got a background and the background starts covering, it shouldn't really be an issue. Let's make this a little bit bigger then so that it fits the page. Now it doesn't matter if it goes over the bottom a little bit because it's still going to cut out where I want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the image all the way to the back so I can just drag it. There we go. Now the image I haven't added any settings to it. Yeah. So I'm going to click on the image setting, assign to layer, and you can see that the image speed and power has changed based on the material that we're using. Okay. So now I've got a design that I've added to this as well. Let's make it a bit smaller so that it fits in. Let's say that you wanted to add, you, know, you could add anything else that you wanted to this design as well. If you wanted to add your name, if you wanted to do, you know, you could add any, you know, any number of images or any number of texts that you wanted, provided that you were considerate of um, the size of the object and then the different settings for it. Now, one thing that you do need to consider also is the um, cutting out procedure for this particular object. 
okay so if, normally if I've got a piece of timber I always want to get them to to, to draw the image first okay because if they've drawn the image first um, the timber is not going to move so you can see that I've put the image first I'm going to move the um, fill for my text second because that's kind of like an image and then I'm going to put my line cutting that's not going all the way through third and the last thing I'm doing is the actual cutting out of the shapes around the objects okay so that way everything has been drawn before the cutting takes place because say the design was to move one millimeter as the pieces start getting cut out that's fine if everything's been drawn in place already this is a very simple design but it's done if I click on this monitor icon now I can actually watch the process that takes place now to actually um, create this object so you can see the first thing the laser is going to do is it's going to draw the three little pigs with the wolf then it's going to draw and shade in the text okay for my design then it's going to outline and you can't really see it as well and the last thing it's going to do is it's going to see how it's actually as it's doing the outline it's cutting it out it's going around four times to make sure that it cuts all of it and then it's going to start cutting out the different um, pieces that are needed for my object and that's going to take an hour and 15 minutes to do that whole design okay so that's essentially how you use this software to create a, um, a laser cut um, puzzle, jigsaw puzzle that you're going to have to do. So this is quite simple. I've put one image, I've put one bit of text, I've put in the um, jigsaw puzzle pieces as well, but you can be as creative as you want um, in creating your jigsaw puzzle taking into consideration your design brief. You're designing it for students who are three years old, okay? So it needs to be simple enough for them to put together. It needs to be relevant to them in a literacy or numeracy way. So that might be uh, a story that they're familiar with, you know, as a um, nursery rhyme, or it might be some very simple addition. It might be something to do with the alphabet, but it needs to be relevant to them. Um, and then you also need to be implementing um, those different strategies that I've just shown you in this video um, here. Once that's done, and you can watch this whole process uh, or the generation of the of the drawing digitally, and you're happy with it, and your teacher's happy with it, then you're ready to laser cut, uh, and then we can move on to actually designing the base for your um, jigsaw puzzle using the 3D printer, designing the cover for it with the perspex. Uh, and then most importantly, even finishing it with a bit of varnish, a bit of paint so that it looks as professional as possible, okay?